you like me, Chris Brock already got going, but you know, we're better. Thank you, though. Um, if you're like me, you have faced the giant that we are going to talk about many times in life. Uh, let me set the stage for you. For the last while, things have been going good. Uh, life is good, you feel good, um, people are, are happy with you, you're at peace with everything, husband and wife are really connecting, everything's doing good, um, nobody's fussing, nobody's having trouble. It just seems like the perfect situation. Well then after a while something happens and, and something, someone says something, someone does something, or you're just getting tired. You've had a busy week, and, and you're just worn out physically. Mentally, you're, you're just not where you need to be. And if you're, if you're like me, and, and you get physically tired, it's not a good time to start trying to make decisions, big decisions, because you're just too exhausted to make those decisions. Well, then you notice that things just don't feel right. Uh, nothing. You're not mad, you're not angry, you're just not really feeling very well. And people begin to notice this. They begin to ask you things like, are you doing okay? You, know, you just don't seem like yourself. You just don't look like things are going okay. Are you doing okay? And you try your best to fight through it. You try your best to put on that happy face. I mean, you've probably been here on Sunday mornings when you're not exactly feeling super happy. And then somebody talks to you and you're like, okay, yeah, it's good. You know, everything's good. I'm, I'm happy. I'm smiling. Can't you tell? You know? You know, you got that kind of a mask on, you're trying your best, but it's just not working. And the more and more you try, the harder it is, until you fall into the giant that, that we're going to talk about tonight, and that is the giant of the swamp. In our house, we call it, I'm just in a funk. I don't know what it is. You call it being blue, being melancholy, being whatever you want to call it. You're not mad, you're not angry. You just don't feel the way you usually feel. Anybody ever been there? Yeah, I've been there. I've been there a lot. Matter of fact, I was there this morning a little bit before I got to church. Um, and one of the things that happens is we get physically tired and exhausted. I mean, this past week was a very busy week. You know, we had Wednesday night Bible study. We had, you know, I had the sermons this morning. Got a sermon ready for night. Had Essie's funeral yesterday. Went to the funeral home. Went to Wayne's house. I mean, just a lot of stuff going on. And yesterday, you know, we celebrated Nathan's birthday and, and went to Raleigh and um, we trick-or-treated in Raleigh last night and uh, had a great time with that, but then you're just really, really tired. And so I woke up this morning and I thought, wow, God, I just need a boost because this isn't myself. I'm just not feeling that into it. You know, some Sunday mornings I'm just into it. This morning I was like, God, you got to get me into it because I'm not there. And so uh, that happens. You know, we face that funk and we face that slump. And tonight we are, we are talking about this giant in David's life called the slump where Mr. Happy-Go-Lucky or Miss Happy-Go-Lucky just is no longer feeling present and, and we're just gone. Well, tonight as we look at this, um, we look at what's happened to David in his life since we've been talking about him. You know, he was a... A uh, person who, who did a lot of great things and had a lot of power and had a, a strong relationship with God and, and things like this. He, he looked to God for a lot of the decisions he had to make uh, when he fought Goliath. He looked to God because that's how he beat Goliath um, as a shepherd. He looked to God as he defeated wild animals and things like this. And um, We know that in, in David's life there was a time when Saul um, became jealous. We know what that time was. We talked about that time as they sang about how many uh, people that David killed, and it got Saul jealous and afraid. And so Saul began to basically chase after David, trying to kill him. I mean, he threw spears at him while he was playing music. He uh, chased him. Jonathan told David, you know, Dad's after you, so you need to watch out. And David's like, what's up with that? I don't get it. But he kept running from Saul. And we know that last week we talked about the fact that uh, David went into the cave and Saul went into the cave and David had every opportunity to get his revenge and kill Saul but he didn't do it and said he just cut off a piece of his robe and he went outside and said hey Saul look 
this is how close you were to being killed, but I can't do that because you're God's anointed, so I can't do this. I can't kill you. He had two different times he could kill him. The second time he was uh, asleep, Saul was, and he had his spear stuck in the ground right by his head. And this guy that was with David said, hey, why don't I just take the spear and, and kill him, and he'll be, you'll be rid of him. And David said, we can't do that because it's God's anointed. So David is going through this whole time of running, of hiding, of trying to get away, of trying to spare his life, and, and he doesn't understand why. And so David gets to this point in his life where he begins to face this giant called the slump. He's just in that feeling, that mindset, that, that something's just not right. And this is what happens when, when David faces the slump. Look what he says. He says this in 1 Samuel 27, 1. But David thought to himself, One of these days I will be destroyed by the hand of Saul. The best thing I can do is to escape to the land of the Philistines. Now are the Philistines on his side or against him? Against him, that's right. He says the best thing I can do is escape to the land of the Philistines or go to the opposition, live over there, and then Saul will give up searching for me anywhere in Israel and I will slip out of his hands. In other words, what David is saying is this. You know, there's going to come a point in my life where Saul's going to kill me. I mean, it's going to happen. Um, it's just not, there's no way I can keep it from happening. So what I need to do is I just need to go and live with the Philistines. And that way, you know, Saul will search for me where he thinks I'm going to be. After he doesn't see me for a while, he'll give up. And I can stay over there. And then I'll slip out of his hands and I will no longer be in danger. Well, a couple things happens here with David. Okay, first of all, when we look at having this kind of a funk or this kind of a slump, there's something happens in our minds. Now, notice David, as he is battling Goliath and as he is running from Saul and as he's doing the things he usually does, one of the phrases that we see in the Scripture a lot is that David inquired of the Lord. In other words, in big decisions he had to make, in things that were going on in his life, one of the biggest things David did was he sought God's help. He looked to God. He tried to find God. He went to God and said, God, what should I do in this situation? How can I do this? How can you help me with this? God was always at the top of his list. God was always his number one source for help. Here's what happens when we get in that funk situation or that slump situation. We start focusing so much on the situations at hand that we forget that God is still with us. Look what he said. But David thought to himself. Now I don't know about any of you, but if you ever start seeking counsel from yourself, it's dangerous. Okay? Not only does it look weird if you're sitting at McDonald's and talking to yourself, not only does it feel weird, but you can't think about it. You can't get good advice from yourself if you're in the funk. Okay, so I'm sad. I'm tired. Johnny, how should I feel? Probably sad and tired. You know, it just doesn't happen. It's not a good thing. But look at what David said. David thought to himself, you know what? Self, listen, we're in trouble. So what should I do, David? And David said, well, you should probably leave. You should probably hide. You should probably go over with the Philistines and, and let them, you know, hide you so you don't get killed so Saul cannot get to you. The other thing David does is he doesn't even seek his friends or his advisors. He doesn't seek anyone. He just decides, you know what? Because of the situation, because I'm feeling like things are going to uh, get bad anyhow, because I'm going to die anyhow, I might as well just make this decision on my own. So that's what he says. Really, David? David? After all you've been through, after all God has brought you through, have you forgotten, David, what people have told you? Now here's the second thing that happens when we get into that funk situation. When we get into that slump in our minds, not only do we try to get advice from ourselves, and do we try to help ourselves get over the situation, the second thing that happens is this. We forget the promises of God. We forget the promises of God. David did the same thing. I mean, if David would have thought back into 1 Samuel 16, we can even think back. 1 Samuel 16. Okay, here's our test for tonight. I always like to give a test. 
Test number one. When did we talk about 1 Samuel 16? Was it a night or morning? <laughs> okay. We talked about that mainly in the morning. We didn't talk about both. We talked about it mainly in the morning because who did we talk about on Sunday morning? Wow. Um, we're tired. We're tired. We're in a slump. Okay? We're in a slump. We talked about Samuel, okay? We talked about Samuel, and we talked about how Samuel's job was to anoint David as king. And you remember, I'm not even going to ask you, I'll tell you. Do you remember um, that when Samuel anointed David, after he anointed David, something happened to David, and that was the power of the Holy Spirit came on David from that day on. And we talked about the fact that the power of the Holy Spirit, what that meant is this. He would be able to do anything under God's help. Anything. He could do anything. Hey, David, think back while you're in this slump. Think back while you're in this slump. Remember what the Holy Spirit gave you? He gave you power to get through this. In other words, David, yeah, you're going through a funk right now. You're tired. You're emotionally drained. But David, remember what the Holy Spirit did. He gave you power. Second thing that happened was this. Jonathan, Saul's son, went to David. And he told David these words in 1 Samuel chapter 23, verse 7. Jonathan, son of Saul, tells David, Don't be afraid. My father will not lay a hand on you. You will be king over Israel, and I will be second to you. Even my father Saul knows this. David forgot what Jonathan said to him. Jonathan basically guaranteed him, you're not going to get hurt. Nothing's going to happen to you. My dad won't lay a hand on you. You're going to be king, David. But David's in this slump. He's in this slump. And he can't remember that. That's what happens to us when we're in the slump. <clears throat> when we get tired and physically exhausted, we forget the promises of God. How many times have we done that? How many times do we get to a point in life and God says, I'll take care of you. I will be with you. I'll never leave you. And then we get in this funk and this slump and we're like, why did God leave me? Think back. Think back to the promises of God. I will never leave you. I will be with you. So we have to remember these things. And David needed to remember them as well. David decides, after talking to himself, the best thing I can do is to escape to the land of the Philistines. So that's what David does. David goes to the land. He talks to a man by the name of Achish, Achish, how you pronounce it, He's the king of Gath. And this is what he says to him. He says, I need a place to stay. Now remember, opposition land. These are the people that David opposed. You remember who Goliath was? He was a Philistine. So David was against the Philistines. But in his mind, I need to hide. So he goes to the Philistine camp. He tells this guy, you know what? I need a place to stay. You got something for me? The king says, I'll give you a village. So he sends him to this village so that he can stay. And the king tells him, he kind of makes some deals with him throughout this scripture passage. He says, here's what I want you to do. I'll give you this part, but what I want you to do is I want you to go and fight Israel. I want you to fight your own people. Well, David says he would, he would, but then he actually goes out and kills people he was supposed to kill, not the ones the Philistine wanted him to kill. So David's in this weird mindset, in this confusing mindset, and things begin to go from bad to to a worse for David. You've probably been there. You've probably been there where it seems like, wow, could it get any worse? And then something happens. A bill comes in the mail. Yeah, it got a lot worse right then. Or you get a bad report from somebody. Or your boss calls you into work and says, yeah, we've been thinking bad thing. It's going from bad to worse. But here's how bad it got for David. Look at how bad it got for David. Right here. In 1 Samuel 36, and David was greatly distressed because the men, now these are his men, these are his followers, as the kids say today, this was his squad, the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters, but David found strength in the Lord his God. David's own men were, were talking and David overheard them say, you know what? Maybe we ought to 
kill David. Maybe we ought to get you want to get your, your mind really freaked out? Walk up to a group of people talking and they say, you know what, maybe we ought to just kill him. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. If I walked into a meeting and somebody said, Well, maybe we should get rid of the preacher, I'm like, whoa, come out. David walks up to the group and he hears these men talking. And they're like, well, I'll stone David. Well, I'll just get rid of him. And David becomes distressed. And he gets really, really, really downcast. So what do you do? What do you do when you get to that point in life where, where it just seems that things go from worse or bad to worse? And you just think it can't get any worse, and it does. This could have been a point in David's life where David threw in the towel and David just gave up. And you know, we get to that point as well in life when we could very easily just give up. We could very easily get out. We could very easily say, I'm not going to do it anymore. I've had it. it you know, I just can't do it anymore. And David is very close to that time. But I, I want us to notice this very last line. There came this point in David's life just as we talked about this morning, that David knew something wasn't right and he needed God. Maybe he woke up, maybe his mind just kind of clicked, maybe he thought about something. I think the Holy Spirit just gave it to him and said, David, you know what? You need God. And so it says right here, but David found strength in the Lord, his God. That's a huge phrase there. His God. You see, David had a personal experience with God. And David decided, now I need my God's help. So how do we do this? How do we get to where David is as well? Well, one of the things um, that we need to do is we need to pray. We need to pray. When we get in that funk, when we get in that slump, when we start feeling kind of like, I just need some energy, I'm tired, pray to God. Okay? Be very careful not to talk to yourself about what you need to do. Because when we're tired and we're exhausted, we don't give ourselves good advice. So we need to pray to God. That's what David needed to do. He found strength in his God. You see, living the Christian life is very, very tiring. I mean, Anita told me we're tired. You know, she said that night. I could see the look on people's faces. You're tired. You're like, preacher, get through. I'm tired. It's, it's hard. Living the Christian life is not like a TV show on the DIY channel, the do-it-yourself channel. We can't do it on our own. We need God's help. So God tells us we need to pray to Him. We need to come to Him. How do we know that? Because in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, it simply says this. Come to me, being Jesus. All you who are weary, anybody weary and burdened, anybody tired, and I will give you rest. I don't know about you, but that pretty well means everybody. Because we all get tired from time to time. We all get weary from time to time. We all get burdened in being a Christian from time to time. And it's in those times when God says, guess what? Come to me, and I will give you the rest you need. First thing, we just need to pray. The second thing we need to do, and this goes a little deeper, and that's this. If things get really bad in our slump, in our funk, one of the things that is not a bad thing to do, people kind of tend to say it is a bad thing. I totally believe it's not. If it gets real bad, one of the things we can do is seek professional help. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, I don't mind talking to people. I don't mind listening to people. I don't mind trying to help people. But there's a certain level of help a pastor can give. Now, you've you got to be careful. Some pastors like to think, you know what? i got all the answers for everybody's problems. I can help them no matter what. And then they come to you with something and you're like, well, oh, that's a little deeper than what I can deal with. Folks, if it gets to the point to where you're starting to feel depressed, that's the time to seek professional help. If it comes a time when you start thinking of harming yourself, that's a time to seek professional help. If there's ever a time when you think of harming others, that's a time to seek professional help. You see, what I want us to understand is this. Being, battling the giant of the slump is very dangerous. Because if we're not careful, it can slip into depression. And if it slips into depression, that's a very, very dangerous area. 
So if you've prayed and, and you just can't seem to get out of it and you feel it getting worse and worse, seek professional help. Ask somebody, how can I get help? Nothing wrong with that because there's some wonderful counselors, wonderful Christian counselors that love to help people like that. So pray. Get professional help if you need to. But finally, don't give up. You know, one of my favorite basketball coaches was Jim Balwano. He was not a very, when he recruited people, didn't recruit the best people in the world. But you know, at the end of his life, when, when he had cancer and he knew he was dying, you know, he gave a great speech. And, and uh, I think this is really the, the reason I liked him, was he had a lot of energy. And he, he simply told him, whatever you do, don't give up. Don't ever give up because cancer cannot take your joy in life. And that's what we need to understand is, is when we get into a spot where we're facing this giant called the slump, we shouldn't give up. But go to God. Go to God and let Him help you. There's a story of a woman named Florence Chadwick. In 1952, she tried to swim the ocean water between Catalina Island and the California shore. She swam through foggy weather and choppy seas for 15 hours. Her muscles began to cramp and her resolve weakened. She begged to be taken out of the water, but her mother, riding in a boat alongside her, urged her not to give up. She kept trying, but grew exhausted, and she stopped swimming. So the people that were there to help her grabbed her and pulled her out of the water and into the boat. They paddled a few more minutes, and the mist broke, and she noticed that the shore was less than a half a mile away. And she simply said, all I could see was the fog. I couldn't see anymore. If she could have seen the end, she would have kept on going. But she said, all I could see was the fog. Sometimes in our lives, that's all we can see. Sometimes in our lives, all we can see are, is the situation we're in. We can't see any farther. We can't see any further out. All we can see is where we're at. And it causes us to get in this funk and get in this slump. I think God wants us to know tonight when we get there, when we come to this place in life, come to God. Seek help if we need to. Whatever we do, don't give up. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on others. But do as David did in this passage of Scripture when he said, but David found strength and the Lord is God. Folks, that's where we have to find our help. That's where we have to find our strength to get through the slumps in life and to battle this giant. Will you pray with me, please? Dear God, we thank you so much for this opportunity to be here tonight.